Hi there guys, thank you for tuning in. Today I'm doing a pad video. I haven't done one for a little while and I'd like to share some of the things that I've come across when I'm improvising or in the studio or, or something I did live or something I've just stumbled across. And today I've stumbled across this that I thought I'd share with you. And I was reading a Louis Belson drum method, I think it was, I think a little while ago, and he was saying your press rolls and double stroke rolls should purr like a fine engine or something. And this is bizarre, but I was with my friend Nick Allen, who's the lead singer and main writer for the band Little Men, um, and he owns Narm Studios, and he had his cat on his lap, and the cat was making a mad purring sound, so happy as he was stroking his head. And this cat is called King, and we have to shout that out every time we go to the studio and we see him, it's like, King! Because he's a black cat and he's big and he walks about like he owns the place, which he does. But he's got arthritis in his legs now, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, lovely cat. But I suddenly remembered that the, when I was watching Nick stroke the cat, it was like the purring sound. And I thought, hang on a minute, Louis Belson, your roll should purr. Hang on a minute, I was practicing some rolls the other day. So anyway, I come across the cat purr, which is what I'm calling it. So kind of random, but stick with it. I think you'll enjoy it. So it's basically a press roll exercise. And I kind of put these presses at the end of different phrases, sometimes triplets, sometimes 16th notes, but I'm using it as like the main focus of, of, of any kind of phrase. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so you can play this purr with one hand like this. Or with both hands. So I'm basically making the stroke with the thumb and the first finger in my right hand, just pushing the stick down. And in the back, I'm allowing the stick to breathe. I'm not letting the fingers fan out. That's not a good technique. I'm playing the stroke and then just letting the stick come to a natural conclusion of its strokes on the head. Let gravity do its thing. If I pinch too tight, I get this, which is not what we want. But equally, I'm not loose here, so you know I could easily just lose the stick. The, you know, the fulcrum is here, thumb and first finger, and a little bit in the second finger as well, to be fair. <clears throat> if you're a match grip player, you can do that with both hands, obviously. I play traditional grip on my left, and it's just the same thing here. Just let the stick play the stroke and come to a natural rest. Now, obviously, if we don't play them together, we play them individually, right, left, right, left, speed them up we get our, our press roll which is cool and of course you can always tell the difference between a right hand stick and a left stick because they sound slightly different when they come down together you don't really get that you just get the emphasis being the purr so I stumbled across this by playing jazz four bar breaks really to be honest um, but it doesn't mean that I don't use it in other places so let me show you some phrases I like to play it's almost like a Swiss triplet. And you can also play hand-to-hand -hand triplets. So you could do the phrase after one triplet, two triplets, three triplets, or four. So you can start to build phrases from that. You know I love saying the term phrases. I don't like saying drum fills necessarily. I like using the term phrases because I think they are musical phrases and they should be seen that way. Okay, we can also play them after 16th notes. And paradiddles. And here we can do them with one hand. So on. So you can really experiment with the two hands, the one hand and what stickings go in and out of it. Of course on the drum kit you could put your your hands on the toms and on cymbals and let the other hand play the buzz on the snare. If you've got a jazz kit and your, your heads are quite tight you could put, put these on your, your, your top tom and your floor tom. It could be moved around anywhere. You can also play it on the ride. 
a thing I like to do sometimes when I'm sort of improvising um, and playing kind of free solos is let my, my stick do that exactly on the ride. So I play it on the ride and let it come to a conclusion. And now on a cymbal, it sizzles in a really nice way. So you should maybe give that, that a go. So yeah, the cat purr, check it out. So there you go, it can be used in any kind of feel, both straight and swung. And I think you should experiment with different stickings going in and out of it. You know, you saw me playing triplets, 16th notes, paradiddles, flams and drags, you know, trying to put it in different places just to experiment what we can do with those little press rolls or cat purrs with either hand. So I hope you enjoyed this. Go to a practice pad or a drum kit right now and try it out because you won't be sorry. It's quite a cool little thing. Whether you're a jazz drum or rock drum, it doesn't matter. Just try this as an exercise. It's pretty cool. And as ever, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Hit the notification bell as well so you know when I'm posting videos. And thank you very much. I'm up to nearly a thousand subscribers, which is mental. So that's brilliant. And if you want to contact me, my email is down below and it might well be at the end of the video as well. So thanks for tuning in. Stay happy, keep drumming, and I'll see you soon.